So, got a Tucson here. It's in a box. We're going to get it out of there. We're going to check it in, take it apart, uh, clean it up, lube it, sharpen it, whatever we got to do to it, and check it out. So, let's get going. Let's get it out of here. Okay. So, that is the Tucson... What is that? Tucson 371 in D2 steel. Um, there we go. My little detent knife. I like this. It's got great action. And M390. There was a rush of these clip points a couple years ago by Tucson. And uh, there's some really cool ones, man. I have a bunch of different little detent ball knives. Slip knives, slip joint knives. I'm sure I'll get around to them at some point, especially the ones I really like. All right, this is a this is an interesting little knife. 100%, that's a little knife. Get rid of all this stuff. I think I, that I remember that these are brass, these insets. It's kind of a, got a mechanical feel to it. Lots of square edges. There's some round edges here, I guess, too. All right, let's not hesitate. Let's get in it. Ooh. Interesting. I mean, yeah. So the thumb flick works with this little, I'm going to, is that titanium? It looks plastic, but I mean, I'm going to hope it's titanium. Yeah, the front flipper works good. I wonder if I can spidey flick that. Yeah. Whew. I love... Okay. Yeah, very cool. Hey, let's get all that oil off it. And uh, we can fondle it some more. I am a knife fondler. You know, like there's a horse whisperer. I'm a knife fondler. I put it in my hand and feel it. And, and then feel it a little different way. And appreciate the curves. I mean, this is getting twisted now, but... Yeah, so I definitely like to go hands-on with my knives. Okay. Nice. And then, yeah, now that I'm kind of figuring out where I want to be when I do that, Pretty effective. Pretty nice. Not drop shut, but I don't think it's because the mechanics aren't there. I just think it's because it's got a light blade. The the blade's pretty light. Yeah, so let's get it open, get it apart, cleaned up, put back together, and we'll keep going. Alright. There's no tension on that. There's no Loctite in there. Whoop. Come on, camera. Yeah, so just a clean screw. I don't know why I show that screw. I guess to say I'm telling the truth or something. I don't know. There, look at that one. No, I'm teasing now. Yeah, these had some tension on them. There we go. Pretty simple. Not bad in here at all. A little bit of oil. Why there's oil on the backspacer, I don't know. But I always find it there. It's like that. Get, this part of the knife gets oiled for some reason. It's kind of a mystery to me. Um, let's see what's in here. Tiny, tiny little baby bearings. Look at that. 
Yeah. Just the little ones. Is that a captured pivot pin? It is not. So, I don't know. It's not the end of the world, but yeah, it's not captured. These are steel, steel washers. They look kind of titanium-ish, but they're not. I mean, I don't even think that's titanium. I think these are, it says titanium handle. So is, is that the titanium? It's all titanium. Well, that whole lock bar, that lock bar steel, I can feel it. You can see how that's been inserted in there, milled. Look at the milling in there. I mean, you know, I make a deal out of that, but I mean, they definitely, there's some engineering that goes into that, to milling that properly to fit that in there with such tight tolerance because it's tight. Yeah, nice steel lock bar insert. I I don't know about these scales. I mean, should we take one off and just see? That doesn't, those don't appear to want to come out of there, but if that's a T8, which it is, let's pull one of them scales real quick. I mean, it's interesting enough. Let's look at it. What's the point of that on this other than to just, it's decorative. Yeah. Same as that screw. So hold that scale on. That's what that's for. There it comes. Super tight tolerance in there. Dripping with oil. So I'm going to take the other one off too. Because I don't want all that oil. Like I, I said this in a video at one point. But what happens is, you know, you put this in your pocket and all that oil seeps out around that and so that's a lock bar it's holding the lock bar in but I already the pocket clips holding the other one let's just take it off it's not that big a deal I have my other little trusty stubby screwdriver set up with a T6 I mean, let's hold that screw on. There we go. Better keep that one where I can see it. All right, let's get this scale out of here. Ooh, it's just super tolerance. Like the milling, the recessed milling in that titanium scale is so precise that it doesn't want to come up at an angle. Like this side's up, but I can feel it. It's binding up because it, the recess is milled so tight. It doesn't want to let it out of there. Wow. That is super tight in there. And of course it's not made. They didn't make it to take it off. Yeah, very cool. So it's not magnetic, so... And it's heavy, so I'm going to say that is brass or copper, you know. But it's got a uh, it's got a uh, a flat finish. Wow, very cool. Let's clean it up. No reason to delay. Let's get all this oil wiped off of it. This uh, black stone wash is really cool too. I mean, nice finish. And I mentioned before, but steel lock bar. So the outside of the knife doesn't have, uh, there's no depressions. So when you're in and out of your pocket, you don't have that relief cut catching your pants or anything. So that's always a plus. I mean, yeah. Yeah, this has got a rough texture this slab and this is where the weight's coming from when I was talking about the weight earlier um, and I mentioned that maybe they were steel um, but it was because of these these are hefty these weigh a bit so that scale by itself without this insert get this oil up I'm just gonna get everything oil again 
Yeah, so this this is heavy. I'll bet you this is as heavy as this. Yeah. But I mean it's not it's not bad heavy, so let me let me back up. I mean I was just making polite conversation. All of a sudden it sounds like I'm railing on it like it's heavy or something. The knife doesn't feel heavy. I don't know how heavy it is, but I mean I'll take a guess at it when I get it back together. But it I mean it doesn't feel heavy in the hand for sure. Alright, let's little pieces and parts. I mean, you know, all the little pieces and stuff on this one, it's nice. The these components are itty bitty, but it is a small knife. It's amazing how efficient these little tiny bearings can be on a small knife. Okay. You know, the older I get, I uh, I gravitate towards these smaller knives. I have some, well, I have a lot of big knives. But I have some that I still like to put in my pocket. And, uh, but by and large, I gravitate more towards small, you know, maybe medium, some medium large knives. But, yeah, I don't carry too many large knives anymore. Um, looking for comfort. Okay. Well, I think the scales go on first, probably. Might as well just get those out of the way. And remount those. Without all the oil. Okay. That was a T8. Yeah, nothing too difficult going on here. I do think that that lock bar insert needs to go in. Yeah, so I was talking about this, this machining and milling here. You know, man, it's easy to discount. It's easy to discount that, but you're not going to find cheap knives with that that level of machining. You know. This, you know, these knives are inexpensive, but, you know, there's definitely some engineering going on here and mill work to put these pieces together. Like, without a screw in there, you know, that's solid in that space. Um, yeah, I think it was this one little one was here. Yeah. Okay. And then a pocket clip. Pocket clip's got enough shape. It's one screw. It's mounted into that brass or copper material, that alloy. Um, and so I, it's going to be a solid pocket clip. I mean, I might as well talk about it a little bit now as I'm putting it in there. I don't have any concerns about that wallering out or becoming loose through time. As long as that screw stays tight, that's going to be tight. Okay, backspacer can go back on. It's got a built-in lanyard hole in the backspacer. Uh, pivot pin. Uh, I gotta put that other scale on. Need to slow my roll. I guess I didn't have to, but why not? Why wouldn't I? Uh, 
Okay. There we go. Yeah, very cool. I'm liking it. All right, pivot pin back in. We're on the home stretch now. Just got to. Uh, I think I put that on right, but I want to make sure. I did not put it on there upside down. There we go. Little dabble do ya. A little bit of that lubrication. It's got internal stop pins built in there. It's nice. Always seems better built with that feature. Put this back on. Okay. Yeah, before I go crazy, where's that other screw go? Yeah, it's holding that scale on right there. Or that insert, not the scale, but the scale insert. There we go. Yeah, I got concerned there. I saw an extra screw. I was like, hold on. Where's that, where's that go? And I'm kind of liking this knife. It's little. Did feel like it had some sharp edges. We're going to get into that here in just a second. We'll get a, we'll check it out. We've got her checked in now. Let's get it checked out. Okay. Absolutely no play there. With authority. Ooh, it's kind of dropping now. Yeah, that's coming out with authority. And, yeah. Got a tiny little bit of lock stick. So the lock up on here, man, it's almost 50%. Not bad. It's locking up good. I mean, this knife's not made for a Kilimanjaro climb, you know. Yeah. So the action is wonderful, and it's definitely improved by cleaning it up and lubing it. Um, which it didn't look filthy in there, so I'm not sure why, but it's definitely an improvement. It's running better now. Almost drop shut. Um, um, the lock access... You know, they're not making any special attempts to get you in there. It's wide enough that you can reach in here, but there's nothing special going on there. So you do got to kind of dig in to get it. Um, I wouldn't say it's inconvenient or uncomfortable, but it, you know, it wasn't a special consideration, but it's definitely doable. Just a little thumb pressure in there. Um, let's see the grip on this thing. So, pretty strong grip here. There's no jimping for this, but it, it definitely encourages that thumb forward strong grip. Um, there is a choil there, so you can choke up for, you know, some close work, uh, detailed work. 
And so it definitely would work for that. But uh, as far as a, a strong grip, I do get a full four fingers on this tiny little bugger. Um, and, and it works. This creates a platform for the thumb. There's some jimping back there. So I, I'm locked in pretty good. Would I be comfortable doing forward work with this knife without concerns about my fingers? I mean, I'm locked in pretty good. So I'd say if I, if I, here's why, because this is kind of tucked in to my hand, I feel pretty secure with it. Like it's going to help me maintain forward pressure. So in a pinch, yes. Uh, if, if I had an opportunity to think this out, this probably wouldn't be in my pocket if I thought I was going to have to do this kind of work, you know, this kind of work a hundred percent. Uh, but this kind of work, I wouldn't have chose it, but if I had to, just because of how this is digging in here, uh, I feel pretty secure there. That's, I'm going to say that's a confident, that's a confident, strong grip for me. Yeah. No real hot spots. I'm not really feeling anything. I do feel the clop, pocket clip, but it's not, it's not burning me up. So yeah, nice, comfortable grip. Uh, the pocket clip, let's check it. So it's short, doesn't have a lot of spring. And so it is a two hand operation. Um, it just dawned on me that I had a pocket here. So because this one is not just, yeah, it's perfect. I want to show it. So here's a back pocket. You can see that, you know, this back pocket of my shorts has had a knife stuck in it before. So there's enough tension going in and coming out that coming out's one handed, but going in, I'm guessing I'm probably going to have to secure that pocket to make it happen. So let's see if it shows any better on the front side. Yeah. So the front side even has this triple stitching on my, on my pockets. And so, yeah, that's a two handed deal. I've got an inner pocket in there as well. This is better. Uh, smoother in and out. So I don't know that it's a pocket shredder. It's just got so much tension that it's not perfect. So I'm going to call that a two-hander, but it's not a fail. Um, let's look at safety real quick on this. So the backspacer only comes to here. And, well, I can tell, like, right now looking at it, I think I can easily put my finger on that blade but let's see yeah i mean if i just set it on here and run it right there i'm contacting blade now i only contact it in this much so it's kind of particular but yeah if if i was in my pocket and i reached in there unaware with force i could cut myself that's fail so the tip uh, there's no way to get at that tip. This backspacer comes around and protects that tip. So that's a pass. So, I mean, why, man? Such a cool little knife. And then it's like, eh, who cares? Or so, I don't, I don't know what the thought process is, but, but it ain't good because man, this backspacer could have just came down to right there. Just add that much to that backspacer. I mean, I, you could put a screw here. You don't got to come all the way forward, but you could, you could have put a, another screw. I, uh, yeah. So it's a fail. Pocket clip. I, I'm going to pass because I mean it's not horrible, um, but it there's so much tension on this short little thing. I'm sure that if I just manipulate it a little bit, I could probably make it a hundred percent better. Again. This isn't about how I can make the knife and customize it. It's how I got it. And so how I got it, that's a two-handed pocket clip. This is a fail. You know, same thing with this. Can I reprofile that? 
uh, <clears throat> excuse me, talk myself to sore throat. Let me get a sip of something here. <clears throat> All right. So can I reprofile that back edge of that blade? Uh, this spot right here, can I bring that down um, so I can't contact it? Yeah, I, most likely. I mean, I guess I can, but that's not what this is. This is how I'm looking at it. Um, does it cut? Probably be close to the last thing. Does it cut? Price and availability. How about that? Let's see if it cuts. I think it's going to cut just because that blade is super thin. Yeah, really thin. It looks like a cutter. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to do anything to it. Not right now. Uh, could I improve that? Yeah, a little bit. But that blade, that blade is out of the box. Wicked sharp. Would shave for sure. It'll trim hairs right off my hand. Just pluck them off. Yeah. Just plucking hairs. Easy, super sharp. Um, price. I paid uh, forty dollars for this on an eBay auction. Um, I don't know, a month or two ago. I believe they're still running um, on eBay. I believe I see them pretty regularly. It's the TS three seventy one in D two and uh, Wong design. I see them fairly regularly, so I think availability-wise, they're definitely out there. Does White Mountain Knives have them? I, you know what? I'm not sure. I didn't look. They may have them, uh, but definitely I'm seeing them on eBay in the auctions. And like I say, I picked this one up uh, for $40. Now, I'm pretty shrewd with my eBay, but I don't know. If this was, uh, if this was $60 and under, would it be worth it? I would say it is. It's a pretty cool little knife, notwithstanding this safety feature. Yeah, kind of goofy. Yeah, pretty nice, and uh, I'm definitely going to try to work this pocket clip and put it in my pocket. I like this knife. So I appreciate you watching, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.